Lord, amen. Let's give the Lord praise this morning. God is great, amen. And he is worthy, the word of God tells us, of all our praise. And so this morning we have come to do what? Praise the Lord, amen. Because we're thankful of all that he has done for us this morning, amen. I have found that as we're going through this Advent season, that we have this assurance of God's promises for our life. What is that promise? That He's coming back. Amen. We have a promise from Him that He's coming back to be our strength, our Savior, our Redeemer, our King. Yes. So we're not like them who have no hope. I say that all the time because why? We live in a day where many people have no hope. But the Bible says we're not like them. And because of that, we are able to impact this world in which we live in because of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. This morning, as we celebrate Advent, we thank God for the Hendricks family. Mr. and Mrs. Ben Hendricks. Miranda, Mandy, would you two come this morning? As we do the Advent candle. Amen. Amen. Ben and Mandy gave me the pleasure of uh, doing the service of their wedding on the riverboat. Not that riverboat. <laughs> the spirit of fury. Amen. Amen. But Advent. We've been talking about Advent for the last two weeks. We're talking about how that Advent is talking about the coming, that Christ came, and that he is to return. That we have this hope through Advent, that the promises of God's word are light to us, because he is light for us. So Advent means the arrival. It talks about the coming of Jesus Christ. And I think it's so important that we are mindful during these four weeks before Christmas, because Advent is studied and we look at this time four weeks before Christmas that reminds us that Christ the child became Christ the man who died on the cross for your sins and for mine. And now we understand that we have eternal life through him who is our hope. We've been talking about that. Right? We've been talking about the, the colors and, and that it represents the royalty, the, the blue, the purple candles, that the royalty of Jesus Christ. We talked about that the four candles represent possibly the four hundred years that the Spirit of God was not before man, before Jesus' arrival. And the four candles represent that it is a, a promise. And this morning as we come to light the pink candle, this pink candle, this, this is called the uh, candle of joy. It's called the candle, sometimes called the shepherd's candle. And so this morning, as we look at Advent, I just want us to be mindful of what it is that we're doing. It's not just a ritual, it's because it's not. It's about an expectation of Jesus coming back. Amen. So last Sunday, the candle of peace was lit. We light it and the candle of hope again as we remember that Christ will come again and bring to the world everlasting peace. Ben and Mandy, would you now light the candle of hope and peace? Of the Lord stood before them. The glory of the Lord was shining around them, 
and they became very frightened. The angel said then, do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news that will be great joy to all the people. Today the Savior was born in a town of David. He is Christ the Lord. This is how you will know him. You will find a baby wrapped in pieces of cloth and laying in a feeding trough. There is a very large group of angels from heaven joined join the first angel, praising God and singing glory to God in, in heaven and on earth. Let there be peace among the people. When the angels left them and went back to heaven, shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. God, I promise to live these lives, to live your hope and peace and joy in us. For you alone can bring light out of darkness. To you, the Lord, my God, I call out to you for help. Help us receive your promise of joy from Psalms 28, 6-7. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry of mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I praise him. The third candle of Advent is the candle of joy. It reminds us the joy that Mary felt when the angel Gabriel <coughs> told that he was going to, that she was going to have a special child that would be born to her. A child who would save and deliver his people. God wants us to have joy. The angel who announced to the shepherds that Jesus had been born to them. Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah of the Lord. We light the candle to remember that Christ brings promise of new life. A life in which the blind receive sight, the lame walk, the prisoners are set free. We light it to remember that he is bright, that he is the bringer of truth and everlasting joy. Ben and Mandy, would you like the third candle, the candle of joy? Let us pray. Our Lord Jesus Emmanuel, we await your coming at this Christmas time. Prepare our hearts to receive you. Open our minds and our hearts to believe in you that you are truly God with us. Father, we thank you for the joy you have given to us in Jesus. Help us prepare our hearts for your gift. Bless our worship. Help us to hear and to do your word. We ask in the name of the one born in Bethlehem, Emmanuel, God with us. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ben and Manny. Amen. The longer that I'm here, the hope, the peace, and the joy that we are reminded during this season should not just be for those four weeks before Christmas. It should be an ever-going thing within us all. That in Christ alone we find the hope and the peace and the joy that only He can bring to us. And so at this time we are mindful that the Lord desires the praise and the worship of his people. And so we come this morning to do what? Praise, praise the Lord. And so let's give the Lord praise. Amen. Amen.
we don't have any monitors up here. Monitor A. Is it that uh, mute button on the top right? Kick it. God rest ye merry
It's one Sunday a month, every couple of months. It's not an enormous uh, commitment. So I'd like to see six people right now come forward. Okay, we got one. We got one. We got two. We got three. We got I feel like an auctioneer. All right. Well, uh, let everybody know in the office. Let Jenny know because the help is really needed and appreciated. Um, and that's an opportunity to serve as our church family continues to grow. Um, very briefly, there's a typo in the bulletin here. The longest night service is Friday the 19th, not Thursday the 18th. And then, of course, next Sunday after church at 3, we are having the children's program. Uh, be a good time. There'll be some adult activities, some high school youth activities. The children are doing a play and some uh, songs and things. And there'll be cookies afterwards, so it's a full, it's a full program. Cookies included. A uh, lot's happening here. Uh, we're needing some people to drive a van, but you've got to have the appropriate license to do that again. Check with the office if you're interested or if you have that uh, license already set up. We also need cookies for next uh, Sunday afternoon's program, so if you can help with that, again, stop by the office. They'll find something for you to do no matter what your talents are. They're even looking for a new guitar player and singer right here, but I hope that's not for you. <laughs> Uh, also, Men's Fellowship, this Tuesday night, uh, 6.30, in the Fellowship Hall. Rumor is they're having stakes. No women allowed. Pretty modest little statement, but that's just, I'm just repeating what I was told, so. It's going to be a He-Man woman. He-Man woman here. What's that? Oh, but they have to wash the dishes. All right. The, well, if the men have to wash the dishes, we're going to be honest. <laughs> All right. He's coming. He's, he's uh, out there to meet. I'm so glad to see all of you here. It's a beautiful thing when I look out and the views are getting pretty full. Praise God. Let's give him a hand. You will also notice we've got some new TVs up here. Much higher resolution. Uh, thank Ken Canavan, Stereo Village, for providing these TVs. Bob's been out here with him all week. They've been working, uh, let's just say, a lot of hours. And hundreds and hundreds of feet of Cat 5 Ethernet cable has been run through this building, and it's not over yet. So, uh, yeah. that we come together 
to pray with one another. Because see, you men are going through things young and old. And you need to be encouraged in the things of God. We need to be built up in our innermost faith in Christ Jesus. And so we want to end this year with a new beginning. Now, as we go into 2015, that we will be men whose focus is on the things of the Lord. And that the church will understand that men are needed. And we will not talk about what men ought to be doing, but we will become a church where men are doing what men are called to do. Amen. Amen. Now, I understand that's putting a lot of pressure because some of us are, are comfortable with where we're at. But if your wife is encouraging you to get one of these and you find it posted on the mirror, sitting on the front seat when you get in the car, maybe she's trying to tell you something. Oh, I know you're tired. I, I know that you have a busy day. But if nothing else just comes, because food's going to be good. And so I encourage you, I'm asking you to come and join us on Tuesday evening, December 16th at 6.30 for fellowship. I have a card here. When I looked at this young man, I, I, I thought, well, that's Brad Anderson. But I realize now that's Dick Anderson. You were young, Dick. <laughs> You haven't always looked like that. Huh? Praise the Lord. December 20th, Saturday, at 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., the Fellowship Hall. There will be a birthday party for Dick Anderson, who will be 80 years old. Amen? Amen. Let's come out and make it a great birthday party for him. That is next Saturday, the 20th, from 5 to 7, here in the Fellowship Hall. Amen. As you can see this morning, um, my better half is not here. She's home in bed, um, unable to be here. Um, we had prayer before I left, and... Um, she just hates missing church. And uh, some of you I know that are here or have been going through some physical things, some pains, uh, getting up and down. Uh, I remember a few weeks ago, uh, Joy was having a hard time getting up and down. Amen. Um, a, few, a month ago, Barb was having a hard time getting up and down. And Anita's having a hard time. And I ask that you would remember her in prayer this morning. Um, but you know her faith is encouraging to me amen <coughs> amen as I was praying for God to touch her she was praying for me to be used by God to send me out to do what God has called me to do I, I thank God we're a great team and so, I'm asking that you remember her in prayer. We thank God today that we've had some who have gone through some surgeries this week. Um, I ask that you would be with them. Um, go to stand in there, set some surgery, and um, keep her in prayer. And uh, you can give her a call for something that we need to be doing, meals or something. Um, let's take care of that. Amen. 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 Uh, Rhonda Sarsovich uh, had surgery Friday, I think it was. Amen. I said you'd keep her in prayer as well. There's many this morning on our prayer concern list. Again, I want to encourage you to take it home. Make this part of your daily worship with the Lord to pray for those on our concern list. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe what God is able to do in prayer. And I'm asking you to let's trust God to do a great and mighty thing in people's lives. I ask that you also pray this morning for families. 
And this past week, I've had many come through the door, and families are going through a lot right now. And I'm asking that you would be with them. I, you know, I know the names. You don't need to know the names. You just need to say, Lord, that the people that are struggling today, you know who they are. Be with them. Sons and daughters. Mothers and fathers. Husbands and wives. You sitting here this morning, I know it was just God's goodness that you're here. And I thank God for that. I thank God for that. We have hope. We have peace. And in the midst of our adversities of life, God promises joy in the midst. We have that in Christ Jesus. And so as we go to prayer this morning, I want you to pray, hallelujah. I want you to believe God this morning for great things in your life, in your family's life. I'm asking you to believe God this morning, Lord, that to touch and heal. I'm asking you to believe God this morning to do miracles in the midst of his people. The promises of God. That he is able to break the chains that are keeping us down this morning. Mighty God that you be served. And so, Father, we come this morning. We want to thank you, Lord, for the day that you made. Waking us up this morning, Lord, starting us on our way, Lord, we give you praise. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that we're able to come and rejoice in the name of Jesus. Thanking him for eternal life. Thanking him for healings, deliverance. We thank you, Lord, this morning that you are greater than the afflictions in our lives. For they, Lord, cannot separate us from the love of God that we have found through you. And so we come today thanking you. For you are Jesus who comes to save. You are Emmanuel. You are God with us. You are the almighty God. There is none like you in all the earth. And so we come this morning. Not as those who have no hope, but we have hope. And we rejoice in your name. And so, Lord, I'm asking you today to minister, Lord, to those, Lord, that are in need of healing, Lord, in their bodies. I'm asking you, Lord, to just remember, Lord, uh, a little thank you, Lord, uh, uh, as she celebrates the ninth birthday, Lord, uh, Monday, I ask you to just be with her. I ask her, Heavenly Father, that you be with her. Parents, Lord, right now, our parents, that, Lord, are, are shadow of what they once were. We find them a little slower, not able to go like they used to go. And I said, you just hold them, Lord. Keep them. Guide them. Love them. Lord, be with sons and daughters, Lord, who are now helping them who once changed them. And Lord, so we want to remember our parents this morning, grandparents. I ask, Lord, that you just be with us as a church body and that we would understand the need for one another. I pray for the men and women of First Baptist this morning that they would understand that the call Lord, is greater than that that we unite inside these walls. This call is a great call outside of these walls. May we be light in the midst of darkness, Lord, and salt in the midst of a sinful generation. Let us believe this morning, Lord, that as we go through this Advent season that because you are the light of the world, that as the light is shown, Lord, through our lives, that men and women will be drawn to you to know, Lord, there's eternal life in Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, I thank you this morning. I thank you that you are the shepherd, the great shepherd, who leads us, guides us, and directs us. You are the peace, Lord, within. Lord, I I'm praying, Lord, as we go, Lord, and be looking at the longest night on the 19th, your heavenly Father, that you would be with everyone that will come through this door, those who are that are coming and who have experienced loss, Lord, of some form or another, that you would be their healer, and be their comfort, that you, Lord, would be their peace. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, that it would be a night, Lord, of lives, Lord, being touched and being transformed. And so, Lord, these things we ask this morning are not too big for you. They're not too hard for you. In fact, Lord, there's nothing we bring before your throne that you cannot do. And so, Lord, I thank you this morning. 
I thank you to Heavenly Father, Lord, for every family represented today. I ask that you would be with us, Lord, and strengthen us as we go our way. We ask, Lord, that you would presence us with your presence this morning. Holy Spirit, have your way. Minister from the front to the back. Meet us, dear Heavenly Father, inside and out. Be glorified, Lord, within us, and we give you praise, Lord, for everything you have done, everything that you are doing. And so, Lord, during the rust, the rust, the hustle and the bustle, Lord, of life, the struggles of life, I ask, Lord, that we would just be mindful that we have a pain, that you are coming to this world, Lord, and to set us free. Lord, may our eyes be fixed on you, dear Heavenly Father. May we not lose sight of the prize that is in you, Lord Jesus, as my prayer is be with us as a nation. Be with us as a people. May you be glorified for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As the ushers prepare to minister to us as we give this morning.
present from the tithe and the offering, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would use this, Lord, as for the furtherance of your kingdom. We believe, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, because of the giving, lives will not only be touched, Lord, within our community, but across these lands and across these seas. Lord, I thank you today for that that you have given to us, an opportunity to worship you with our tithes and our offerings. So I ask that you bless it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise one more time. Children's Church.
eat more veggies. <laughs> They think he sits on his throne up in heaven and looks down to see if we are being naughty or nice. And if we do more nice things than naughty things, we get to go to heaven. But that, that isn't the way God works at all. When God looks down at all of us, he sees that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's our Bible verse. None of us deserve to go to heaven because of our own goodness. And that is why we celebrate Christmas. Because God sent his son Jesus to be born in a stable and to die on a cross to save us from our sin. If we put our trust in Jesus, then God writes our name in the book of life. And it can never, ever be erased. And that is the real meaning of Christmas. Yeah. 
You are a people blessed of the Lord. Now, I'm not talking about as a church, as a congregation. I'm talking about each and every one of you as individuals. You need to know this morning, you are blessed of the Lord. And if you're not sure that you are blessed this morning, you are blessed because why? You woke up with an understanding that Jesus Christ is what? Able to save. That he's able to keep us, able to strengthen us. And when we understand that, we are blessed. Because, see, to not know that means that you don't know the one who is able to save, able to forgive of sins, and able to give new life. But because you know this, you are the blessed children of God. We want to look at this text this morning, understanding that in the scriptures, that the word of God tells us as we meet on this third Sunday of Advent, that we are to continue with all that God is calling us to know that he has promised that he is coming back. And that we will have hope, that we will have peace. But we also now can have joy with this understanding. He is the joy of the world. To the world. And that we have a confidence in him able to save. I want to read to you something that I, I, I copied. It says, so far in Advent, we have seen three voices merge from the, the most important book. We have heard the voice of the prophet Isaiah speaking from 8th century Jerusalem preparing the people for an onslaught of a mighty Assyrian Empire. We have heard the voice of a poet with the people of God in exile after the Babylonians destroyed their city in the 6th century. And we have heard from the voice of the preacher accompanying the people of God as they return to the destroyed city at the end of the 6th century. The common question that was being asked over two and a half centuries was, is God still with us? And the answer is, that is given throughout the book, and the Hebrew word is that they call him Emmanuel, which means, yes, God is with us. We have the same question as we approach Christmas, this season that we are in right now. Is God still with us? Is God still with you? And the answer is still reigns true from Isaiah. God is with us. When I read that, I thought I, I need to share that with you. That there was a people, the children of Israel were in captivity. Their might and strength that God had given them has dwindled because of their disobedience. And because of their disobedience, they found themselves in captivity. The joyous city of the Lord had been now raided and tore down. And the people were now returning back to the place that the Lord had given them. And in the midst of the destruction, in the midst of the struggles of their life, God has promised to them that I will raise you up. That the circumstances, the situations of life will not keep you down. And that you will be built up because he has promised you that he would be God in the midst of our lives. I think sometimes in our struggles in life that we sometimes think that God is not there. Oh, I, I know that you say, well, I, Pastor, I've never not believed. But we study James, and James says, if you have faith in God, you will show your faith by what? Putting it into action. Because, see, if we are children of God who understand the things of God, that even in the midst of trials and tribulations, we would know then that we have what? Hope, peace. And if we understand that God's love is an eternal love and that he is always with us, that we would find ourselves still having joy within us. That we would be able to enjoy the day that God has given us and find that we have comfort in him who has saved us. And so here the battle that the Israelites have found themselves in a situation that they have been dealing with life. And it started out in verse 8 that it says, I, the Lord, love justice. That he was telling us that there's one thing that we need to know. There's one thing when you get in trouble for the things that you've done. And then there's another thing when things have been brought upon you by others. So it says that God loves justice. He wants us to do right. 
And when you're punished for doing wrong, you have broken that because why? You were to walk in, in, in righteousness and holiness, and we chose not to. But then he says there's some injustice being done in the world. And we see this injustice. We see things that we know are not right, not only in our country, but in the countries outside of our borders. We see the injustice that is done. But God is talking to the children of Israel, and he is saying to them, I hate stealing and everything that is wrong. I will be fair and give my people what they should have, and I will make an agreement with them that will continue forever. He was telling the children of Israel, even though you're going back to the area that has been taken from you, and now I brought you back to the land and you're seeing the ruins of what they have done to you. He says, I will deal with that. See, sometimes I think that we, as children of God, think that the evildoers get away with it. And here God says, nobody gets away with anything. He says, I deal with you, money, when you're doing wrong, and I will deal with others as they do wrong. And so don't you judge time, and that's what we've been looking at through the Word of God, because last week we looked at as one day as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day, that God is not caught up in time as we know time. And so he says that in the scriptures here, that in injustice, he hates what is wrong, and he will deal with it. But we should know that because we have an agreement through Christ Jesus our Lord, that we have a promise and not get caught up on what our eyes see and our ears hear. Every nation and everyone in all nations will know the children of my people. And their children will be known among the nations. God is saying to us as children of God, and I think that sometimes we're like this, that we are a forgotten people. There was a time when the church had power, impacted circumstances, situations. There was a day when cities set up their ordinances and they would say that, a tavern couldn't be within X amount of feet of a church. They shouldn't be categorical. They had to be a distance from. There was a time when the, the church set policy that evil had to be done out in the booms. Couldn't be done. And, but there's a day in which we live that we find that Sin has encamped around the body of Christ. Our light doesn't seem to be as bright. And here he says to us, but every nation will know that we are the people of God. And then the day in which we live before Christ comes back, it tells us that we will become the fullness of Christ. And because of that, the glory of God will be revealed and the world will know that Jesus Christ is Lord and we are his children and his glory and promises rest upon his church. And so he was encouraging them. He was encouraging them in the struggles of their life that they need to get their eyes off their mess and get their eyes back upon Jesus. <laughs> See, I, I, I'm telling you, it's hard to, to walk with the things of the Lord which are head down. I had a good friend that every time I, 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 we worked together and he would walk down the halls and his head would be like this. And I would holler at him, get your head up. But a few seconds later, his head would be back down. I don't know if he didn't know if his feet would know which time to pick up and move. But he walked with his head down. And I thought, if you're on a busy intersection, that wouldn't be a good thing to do. But we as children of God need to stop walking with our heads down. The Word of God tells us that in the circumstances and situation, that He said, I will raise you up and the world will know that you are my children. And then it goes on to tell us that not only will the nations know that we are the children, but it says their children will be known among the nations. And that the world will know and begin to impact, be, will be impacted because of our lives and the lives of those that we love. See, I believe that as a church, we should be raising up right now. There ought to be three generations sitting with us today that are impacting the world. Because God's promises are saying that the world needs to know that I am God. And the only way that they're going to know is when we as children understand who we are in Christ Jesus. So he says, so you've gone through some stuff. 
But I'm God and I will bring forth justice. I will take care of things. You just walk with your head up and be about the things that I've called you to do. So you got some sickness in your life. I, I, I know you're leaving, Dottie. Like I said, I won't say nothing. <laughs> okay, all right. That's all right. I can walk with my head up. That's right. Amen. <laughs> You got it. I know that one got it. <laughs> Anyone who sees them will know that they are people the Lord has blessed. He wasn't saying, he, he said, here you are now. You're stuck in a situation and circumstance of life. Your city is torn down and yet he says in the midst of the rubbles of life, the strength, the stresses of life, they will know that you are my people and I'm your God. See, I'm asking you today, are you walking with a hope and a peace that comes in Christ Jesus that the joy of God would be revealed before everyone that they would know that circumstances and situations will never rob you of the joy that the Lord has given you? And that's what Jesus, the Word of God is telling us this morning. It says that the Lord makes me very happy I'm going to go back to verse 9. Every, everyone in all nations will know the children of my people, and their children will be known among nations. And anyone who sees them will know that they are, pe are people the Lord has blessed. A people blessed of the Lord. That's who you are this morning. Amen. But do people know you're blessed? Here the Bible tells us that it says, and the people will know the Lord has blessed you. The Lord makes me very happy. He blesses me. That's what it's saying. That I ought to understand that I have a joy this morning because I am blessed of the Lord. And even though things may not be going the way I wanted, it will not stop me from praising, nor did it stop her from praising the Lord this morning as I left. I hope and trust in Him. All that I am rejoices in my God. See, I, I like that. It says, it don't matter what I'm going through. Everything that is in me, I'm going to give God praise for. I'm going to thank him for everything he has done for me. I know that he woke me up this morning. If I don't understand anything else, I did not wake up because the alarm went off. <coughs> I woke up because Father said, son, son, it's time to do it again. It's time to do it again. That I want you to go out and I want you to live for me. I, I want you to get up this morning. There were some people that went to bed, and we'll read about them in the paper, that went to bed last night that did not get the nudge because Father called them home. But every one of us this morning were nudged by the hand of God and said, another day I have blessed you with. And so this morning I give God praise because while I understand I am blessed because I woke up this morning. That the Lord has blessed. He makes me happy. And I rejoice in my God. He has covered me with clothes of salvation. And wrapped me with the coat of goodness. That I understand that he holds me. And he keeps me. And he is my provider. And the salvation that I have. Is more than me just being saved from sin. It is a salvation that tells me that. Because I'm in Christ Jesus. Nothing can keep me from praising him. Rejoicing in him and thanking him for all he has done and the goodness that he has poured out upon us. Back in verse 1 of 61, it says, The Lord God has put his spirit in me because the Lord has appointed me to tell the good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort those whose hearts are broken and to tell the captives they are free and to tell the prisoners they are released. You need to know this morning you're free. He's telling us that we who were captive in sin have now been released from the, the death that sin brings. That I have eternal life through Jesus Christ and you have eternal life. But more than that, that the chains of my past cannot keep me down because the Lord has said you're no longer a prisoner to sin. And because of that, we can rise above our circumstances and our situations. 
But sometimes we don't have the mind of Christ. Sometimes we didn't know that we could because why? We've been living a life so long with our heads down. And here the word of God is telling us today, he has set us free. And so he began to tell them in verse 1 of Isaiah 61 that he said to them, he has set into comfort those whose hearts are broken, to tell the captives they are free, and to tell the prisoners they are released. He has sent me to announce the time when the Lord will show his kindness and the time when our God will punish evil people. That the word of God tells us again that there's going to be a time that I'm going to set you free, and then there's a time that I'm also going to take care of the stuff. See, so you ain't going to worry about the stuff. He said, I will take care of the stuff. See, sometimes we spend all of our time talking about why don't God get them. He says, I will get them. What you need to do is just walk with your head up and stop worrying about that over there that's fallen because I'll deal with that. But if you're concerned about the fallen, then walk with your head up so they would see my glory operating in you. And if they saw my glory operate in you, then they might have a reason to want to move from the place that they're at. And so he's speaking and hear this word. It's a word that we, we hear and that we see there in Luke. It says that he has sent me to announce the time when the Lord will show his kindness, the time when our God will punish evil people. He has sent me to comfort all those who are sad and, have, and to help the sorrowing people of Jerusalem. See, I, I thank God this morning that he deals with my emotions. He deals with my circumstances. He says, I understand there's times and circumstances of life where you might feel sad. Your heart might be heavy. Your mind may be caught up on the things that matter to you. He says, I get all of that. He says, but I'm just going to tell you that I am your God and I will comfort you. I will comfort you that's sorrow. I'll comfort you that is sad. I'll comfort you with saying that I feel like everything in life is overwhelming me and I don't know what to do. And he says, I will comfort you. I will comfort you. And so in this word, the word of God is telling us, don't lose heart. Don't lose heart because you're going through something right now. I will be God if you let me. And so here in the scriptures goes on and tells us, I will give them a crown to replace their ashes and the oil of gladness to replace their sorrows and clothes uh, and crowns uh, and clothes of praise to replace their spirit of sadness. He says, I will embrace you with my glory. I will put my anointing, my life upon you and in you. And it will take care of the the ashes. I will give you the crown uh, that will let you know that my life matters and it matters to who? It matters to God. Look at your neighbor and tell, tell your neighbor this morning, your life matters to God. Turn to your other neighbor. And mama, tell that baby, your life matters to God. See, I believe it's so important that mamas even tell babies your life matters to God. You begin to tell that child that, and that child will always know that they are here for a reason. Then they will be called trees of goodness, trees planted by the Lord to show his greatness. I like the idea that he says, I will give them a crown to replace the, the spirit of of sadness. And then they will be called the trees of goodness, trees planted by the Lord to show his greatness. Now, I don't know if God has told us, and sometimes we have used this wrong, that I'm a tree planted and I can't be moved. But God means that in a positive sense. That he has planted you. And the winds of life will blow, but you'll stand. 
the trials of life will come, the seasons of life you will face. And there will be times that you will shed your leaves, but there will also be a time when you will blossom. And the glory of who I am will be revealed to all. And they will know that I have planted you. See, our lives should be that that would represent that an evidence that we serve a living God and why it's evident in our life and how we live in him. They will rebuild the ruins and restore the places destroyed long ago. They will repair the ruined cities and they that are destroyed so long ago. In Luke 4, the scriptures tells us, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. And stories about him spread all through the area. He began to teach in their synagogues and everyone praised him. Jesus traveled to Nazareth where he had grown up. And on the Sabbath day, he went to the synagogue, as he always did, and stood up and read. The book of Isaiah, the prophet, was given to him. He opened the book and found the place where this is written. The Lord has put his spirit in me, because he has appointed me to tell the good news to the poor. He has sent me to tell the captives they are free, and to tell the blind that they can see again. God sent me to free those who have been treated unfairly and to announce the time when the Lord will show his kindness. Jesus closed the book and gave it back to the assistant and sat down. And everyone in the synagogue was watching Jesus closely and he began to say to them, while you heard these words just now, they were coming true. Jesus said that everything that had been spoken by Isaiah has now come true. That he has come to set the captives free, to give new life to all that would put their trust in him. And that the word of God is being fulfilled and Jesus said, I have fulfilled it this day. And that scriptures that were saying that those that were sad, those that were going through sorrow, those were that struggling in life, felt they were prisoners in chain because of sin or the, the hardness of life that had been given to them. He says, I have come now to set the captives free. And Jesus said, my arrival, my first advent was the reason that you can have joy in our circumstances and situations. Because the spirit of the Lord was truly upon him. And the good news to we who understood we were poor in spirit. Poor in spirit. Blessed are those who understand they are poor in spirit. Blessed are you that understand you need a savior. Do you know this morning you need a savior? Do you know that Jesus is your savior and he has come? And that is greater than the circumstances and situations you find your life dealing with today. If you would know that, then you would find comfort in Christ Jesus. See, I need to know, let you know this morning that God is showing us the way through seas of sorrow. See, these things that come in our life, in this life you shall have what trials and tribulations will be of good cheer because I have overcome. He is saying in the midst of your struggles, I'm going to show you that I'm God. I'm going to show you that I am the mighty one. I am God and I'm greater than your circumstance. I will show you in the midst and out of that sorrow, out of that struggle of life, you will begin to rise up as a tree planted by God. And his glory will be revealed and they'll say, wait a minute, I was going through the same thing. Why ain't I living like that? Well, if you don't know Jesus, you can't live like that. He said, victorious. Overcoming every circumstance, situation that comes our way. So in the seeds of sorrow, they become a harvest of what? Of joy. Of joy. See, I, I, I don't know about you, I, uh, but I've talked to some farmers. I ain't never done any farming. I, I tried to garden once with Steve Williamson. He and Diane and Anita and I went out to breathe and we planted a huge garden. And somewhere along the summer, the weeds overtook it. 
one time. And then he said, we got to clean this up. And as we were pulling the weeds and getting everything right and taking care of things, I knew in my heart, I'm never planning on nothing. <laughs> But then, when the garden began to bring forth his harvest, and all that we planted then began to develop, and we were eating things that we had planted with our own hands, <coughs> I said, well, you know, it really wasn't all that bad. <laughs> Look at what we did. Look, we did this. And that's what it's saying. When we trust God, we will begin to rejoice in the harvest. There was some sorrow along the way. There was some struggle sometimes in life. But because of God's promises, he says you will rejoice in the harvest that I am showing you. See, you need to know right now your harvest is coming. Your harvest is coming. All you got to do is just stay in Christ Jesus. Your harvest is coming. Let him go ahead and prune you, clean you up a little bit, and you will begin to flourish. You will begin to blossom. You will begin to show forth the glory of God. It didn't start out this pretty. It had to work through. It had to break through. It didn't start out this way. It had to go through some growing period, but when it, the harvest was complete, it brought forth the glory, and we need to know this morning that through Christ Jesus you will bring forth a harvest. And that harvest then will cause you to worship the Lord. He said, when the Lord brought the prisoners back to Jerusalem, it seemed as if, in Psalms 126, it said when the Lord brought back the prisoners back from, to Jerusalem, it seemed as if, we were dreaming. Then we were filled with laughter and we sung happy songs. And then other nations said, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we were very glad. The Lord returned our prisoners again as you bring streams to the desert. And those who cried as they panic crops will sing at harvest time. And those who cry as they carry out the seed will return singing and carrying bundles of grain. We are what? A blessed people of God. The psalmist says to us in the midst of the harvest, through the hard times, the people were glad when they got back to home. Oh, it was the ruins. It, it, it wasn't a spot. It, it, it needed some fixing up. It needed to, the things that they remember were not quite there. And they couldn't see what they had left when they were caught put in captivity. But what they had experienced, they had remembered that God had blessed them along the way. And you know what? Then he began to say, there's no place like home. <laughs> they began to say, there's no place like home. I understand that it's not what it ought to be, but oh, it's going to get back to that place. I'm, I'm going to make it a home again. I'm going to allow God to have his way. When the prodigal gets home, he begins to rejoice in the things of the Lord. I was dead, but now I've been made alive. That's what the Father said when the Son returned. The harvest makes us joyful because we have the Lord. So you're going through a tough time. You put your trust in Jesus. Because it's real. He's able to touch lives and transform lives. He's able to hold us and keep us. And the word says the work he's begun in us. He will bring it to completion. The word of God this morning was telling us. That Jesus said. I have completed. Everything Isaiah has said. I have come to set the captives free. I don't know what's binding you up this morning. But I'll just tell you right now. The handcuffs have been unlocked. <laughs> the ankle bracelets have been unlocked. I remember, I remember being out to the prison, Sheldon. Bob, I saw the inmates. 
They had cuffs on. They had ankle shackles on. And if I'm not mistaken, there was a chain that connected them. So you couldn't really run because you were all bound up. When we're in sin, you can't really run. When you're in disobedience, you really can't run. But Jesus said, I have set you free. And when you're free, when you're free, see, that's what God has said to us today. You're free. And you can put your trust in the joy of the Lord is our strength. See, I, it ain't about being a Baptist. It's about being a child of God. He will never bind us up in denominationalism. He has set us free. Thank God today that I have a joy that is unspeakable. Why would you? Amen. Amen. The promises of God are eternal. And everything that He has brought our way is to set us free this morning. Going through a hard time? This is a time you put your trust in God. Life ain't going the way you would like it to go. This is the time you put your trust in God. I don't know if I can go to that job one more day. The people, the boss, they're all ignorant. But I cried out to God and I said, God, I need a job. And I got a job. And then he says to me, why are you complaining? Because I will give you freedom. And this job will not shackle you from letting my life shine. <clears throat> See, you need to know today, there's no circumstance that we can say to God, I can't let your glory be revealed. Because I'm all bound up. I can't go. I can't run. I can't do it. He said, I've set you free from all that stuff. Your anger. Your fears. It don't matter where you come from. You need to know today. The harvest has come. In Christ Jesus. Amen. You are my king. If you've never received Christ as your personal Savior, I'm going to ask that you come forward this morning. Because Jesus Christ has come to set you free. If you've been coming and you desire to become a member of First Baptist Church, we'd ask that you would stand up from where you're at and come down front this morning. And if you need prayer this morning, we want to pray for you. Because Christ has come to set you free. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Because you are forsaken, I'm accepted.
We thank you, Lord, for the hope you have given, the peace that you have placed through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. We thank you, Lord, for the joy, because, Lord, there's been some struggles. But, Lord, when the harvest comes, hallelujah, it says the people will rejoice. And so, Lord, the Word of God reminds us to rejoice and again rejoice. And let it be known to all that you are real and that your promises are true. And so, Lord, I thank you today, Lord, for your word that allows us to know that nothing can bind us because who the Son says free is free indeed. And so go with us as we go from here. Let us face the challenges of life where they're coming our way with faith. Teach us how to get out of the way that you may be God in the midst of our circumstances and situations. Give us ears to hear, a heart to receive, and encourage to walk out in faith that which you have given to us. Freedom. The prisoner says, I have been set free. To you all praise be given now in Jesus' name. Go with us now. Amen. 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 Give the Lord praise. Amen. 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 Amen.